Hello, this is Mike from Windows7Forums.com. I'm the owner and founder of Windows7Forums.com. And in this tutorial, we will show you how to install Windows Home Server. Windows Home Server is actually quite an annoyance to install, unfortunately. However, once you get it working, it is a viable commercial product that allows you to host and run applications necessary to back up your computers in your home, especially if you have more than one computer. As you can see, we're here at the Windows Home Server setup. We choose our language. In this case, it is United States, our location. We choose our storage device and we choose new installation. This is after plugging in our DVD disk and we go to I accept with the end user license agreement here and we will not put in a product key because we can't give you a product key on this video but we can still proceed for 30 days without one now something that's important to note about Windows Home Server and here we're actually naming the server but something important to note about the installation process is that on an Intel i7 Extreme Edition processor with 3.3 gigahertz of computing power uh, with 2 gigabytes of DDR3 memory this installation uh, oh and also with uh, <laughs> four solid state drives in a RAID 0 array this installation took approximately 42 minutes so if you don't have a lot of time uh, you will not have too much trouble once the installation starts, which it now has, but um, you will in fact uh, require a lot of time. Uh, here we see Windows uh, doing a lot of installation procedures that we're very familiar with if we've done installations before. We answer a question here or there, and of course it says setup will take 52 minutes to complete. In fact, it's pretty much correct in this instance. It actually took 42 minutes and we're not going to go through that whole 42 minute process obviously because it's quite long uh, but we will go through the key aspects of it. I would say that during this process of installation um, there are at least a dozen reboots that take place or more uh, during the process of Windows Home Server installation. And what you should know is that Windows Home Server is limited to five computers. So if you have more than five computers in your home, you do not want to use Windows Home Server. You want to start looking at options like Windows uh, Small Business Server 2003 or 2008. Windows Home Server is actually a modified version of Windows Small Business Server 2003. It's a little bit limited, but it has extra features and additional uh, user interface and uh, multimedia features that are designed for home users and aren't as complex to configure and to manage. But you're going to uh, see how this installation goes. And as you see, we're copying the installation files and it's a long road from here. So we're going to skip to the next step right away. Coming back now, the one good thing that Windows Home Server installation does do is that it pretty much tells you every single thing it's doing to almost a fault. The installation process is so long and so convoluted that it really gets on your nerves after a while. Um, I can't imagine doing this without being paid a huge sum of money for, <laughs> for an organization. But what ha it, the installation process is much longer than Server 2003 and Server 2008. But here you see something interesting. Upon the first reboot, we start seeing something very familiar. And this is uh, very similar to not only the Windows XP installation uh, user interface that, we, that we're normally used to when installing Windows XP, but it is in fact the Windows Server 2003 for small business server uh, user interface installation. And we're not obviously installing Windows Server 2003 small business server, but we can see the foundation of what this actually is. Windows Home Business uh, Server is uh, Windows Small Business Server 2003 for small business with restrictions uh, and with a new user interface that makes uh, managing it um, very much easier for the home user. With 
Windows Server 2003 for small business, uh, this requires an information technology manager or administrator or someone with a certification in Windows Server 2003 to really understand how every feature works, whether it's terminal services, IAS server, SQL, you know, with um, the, the uh, home server, it's more of a, of a matter of being able to back up files on mo a couple computers uh, with a client that's installed on those machines. It's more or less about um, being able to share out files and back them up very easily and also being able to share out multimedia content to all of your computers at once. It's basically it could be considered a home base for all your computers and it allows for a certain amount of remote desktop uh, activity. So you can sort of try to remote in uh, whether you're at a hotel or, or on a business trip and trying to get back onto your home computer or something. But ultimately, uh, as you see, yeah, Windows Server 2003 is uh, booting up, and it'll do this about a dozen more times before we're done. So we'll just go ahead and skip on to the next step now. When we implement Windows servers in a professional environment, we tend to focus on the idea of network infrastructure and network management. What Windows uh, Home Server in intends to do or attempts to do is to totally knock that out for the home user. And we see a lot of weird stuff going on with the installer. We see that it takes a very long time. It's sort of a hybrid between the Windows uh, Server, uh, Small Business Server installation slash XP installation mode with uh, the Vista uh, style or Windows 7 style PE loader installer. But really uh, what's going on here is it's trying to do everything for you so that you don't really have to answer any questions. And that's probably why it takes so long. They've sort of, uh, to put it bluntly, uh, made this uh, server idiot proof. So if you don't know really how to manage a server, that's okay. And you know, basically the whole concept is we're going to guide you. As a matter of fact, one thing you'll see is a task that most people who do do a server installation will do uh, after they install the operating system. And we're about 20 minutes in and we're nowhere near complete with this install. But it'll go ahead and actually do a check disk uh, of, the, of the drive automatically. It'll scan the drive for errors, which is something we never uh, see with a Windows installation. Uh, it's almost like unheard of uh, to see this. Uh, I certainly haven't seen it before. I've done quite a few uh, Windows Server installs and I've never seen it do this. I could be just uh, bugging out here, but I really have never seen it do this before. And it'll go on and on. It'll restart more and more for about an hour. And this is with very fast hard drives. So if you have like one hard drive, this is highly unrecommended. For a server, you need to have at least two drives. Four is even better. If you have six or eight, <laughs> great. I mean, you really need to have a lot of horsepower to uh, run this type of thing, even with the home server. The home server can work on requirements that are very small, uh, but if you're trying to back up all your files on all your other computers, you're definitely going to need a lot of hard drive space. So let's continue on and uh, see how this goes. Overall, the installation is not very difficult. And it's pretty much, uh, once you start at the very beginning and input the initial information, the uh, installation will, will take a long time. So you can go out, go to the movies, come back, something like that. But you'll really uh, appreciate the fact that when you come back, you'll have a server waiting for you and it's re ready to be set up. And the configuration process is actually much more interesting and much more fun than watching this installer. So pretty much this is how it goes. The installer doesn't really change anywhere from here. Perhaps one of the most frustrating points is one we'll just zoom to real quick and that'll be the end of the video. By far, Windows Home Server must be the longest server out of Microsoft's uh, large collection of server operating systems. It must be the, the longest one to install because it's pretty much trying, as I said before, to do everything for you. But one thing that's very interesting and very annoying 
is this one part here where it like just stuff pops up out of nowhere while it's doing this installing updates thing. Right now it's telling you it's installing updates, but meanwhile you're getting like some kind of user interface that you really would you really shouldn't see while the operating system is being installed. And you can actually navigate around and do all sorts of things and check things. You might actually be able to open some programs. And if you plan on doing this while you're doing the install, that's highly not recommended. Uh, then it sort of like disappears and comes back. And this is sort of a weird thing. Uh, and it's probably the product of the fact that home server, and actually now if you have an internet connection, it's actually going online and downloading probably dozens if not over a hundred updates from <laughs> Microsoft servers here so uh, this is what takes forever I mean this turns what would be a very simple process a very simple installation into something that takes forever uh, we're talking about a uh, DVD uh, media here installation media that's really something like 800 megabytes, but the installation winds up taking over an hour, and it's just like unbelievable, uh, especially with this type of hardware. I can't imagine someone running a uh, dual core processor with two gigabytes of RAM and maybe two hard drives, one in a RAID, one for backup purposes or you know redundancy, disaster recovery. I can't imagine it because it would take like four or five or six hours and I've seen it done I've seen I've had to do it before I've seen it done before but for a home server I just don't like that idea and I think that's why this operating system was geared more uh, towards people just like buying it in the store or something like uh, most most of the time if, if you're going to um, acquire Windows Home Server, you're probably not even going to know how to install the operating system unless you're really like one of those do-it-yourself people. Um, you're probably not going to do this installation. So uh, it is very long install. And as you see, this installing updates thing goes on forever and ever and ever. But once it's done, the configuration process actually is very um, informative, useful, and we'll get to that point in another video uh, where you will be able to see exactly how, now after all the files are placed, the d devices are configured, uh, everything's working nominally, you'll see how you can now centrally manage your home all of your home computers from this one device. It's almost like a system command center uh, type software, which Microsoft also has, but for enterprises and large businesses. Well, here we have it, everyone. We've condensed what is a anywhere from a 45-minute to 4-hour installation into a about 13 or 14 minute video. Uh, what's interesting here is that we're now at the welcome screen, the configuration screen, and once we uh, set up some stuff here, uh, if you check out the next video about this, if you're actually still interested, uh, we'll go into how to configure the home server, how other computers on your network appear on the home server, and uh, what the benefit uh, and disadvantage is of the home server system. Uh, you'll definitely need to know a couple things about home server before the end of this video. And those facts are the minimum requirements to actually run home server, which I haven't given you. The minimum requirements to run home server are actually very small. Um, they actually are, as of 2007, uh, 1.2 gigahertz equivalent x86 CPU. So you can't run this 64-bit, by the way. One internal hard drive, which is 80 gigabytes minimum. Um, 512 gigabytes of RAM. A 1 gigabit uh, Ethernet car, uh, network card. And uh, four external USB ports we hope that you'll have. Um, and, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, this will be the case. But... There, you know, the thing is, uh, <laughs> this isn't the minimum requirements. I mean, if you have like two or three computers, you want like more than 80 gigabyte hard drive. You know, you don't want like a really slow 1.2 gigahertz atom processor like uh, netbook running on this thing. You really want to have a powerful quad core processor 
with something like two or three gigabytes of RAM, and you want to at least have a 1.5 terabyte hard drive, if not more so. So we'll go into that in the next video. But thanks for watching. Uh, for more information on server technology, and especially Windows 7, visit windows7forums.com.